This video tutorial is brought to you by tipsquirrel.com. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and today we're looking at Lightroom and we're going to be talking about using additional external editors. When you first install Lightroom, it will detect whether you have Photoshop or Photoshop Elements installed, and it will configure Photoshop as your primary editor. And you can get to that by selecting any photo in the library module and then choosing the photo menu and selecting Edit In. And here we can see Photoshop is set up in my version of Lightroom as the primary editor. And the shortcut is Control E. And that's Command E on a Mac. Now there's a secondary editor that's configured with Control Alt E or Command Option E on a Mac. And I've got mine set to Photoshop Elements. But there are a number of additional editors that are also configured here. And so in this video today, we're going to look at how to set these up and how to adjust and configure these to your taste and to your needs. We're going to start by going to the Edit menu and then choosing Preferences, and that's under the Lightroom menu on a Mac. Here in the Preferences dialog box, we're going to go to the External Editing tab, and here's where we configure our primary editor, which in my case is Photoshop CC 2014. We can set the file format color space, bit depth, and so forth. Now down here in the second part of this dialog box is our configuration section for the additional external editor. And there should be an S on the end of this because this is where we configure the external editors. Now you can see here that I'm showing the preset for Photoshop Elements 10. And here's my application. I've got the same configuration options that we saw up here for Photoshop. The file format, which can be TIFF, PSD or JPEG, the color space, which can be Profoto, Adobe RGB, or sRGB, and the bit depth, which can be 8 or 16 bits. But remember that we had a long list of additional editors in our edit menu, and we can find those by simply clicking this drop down, and here we can see the additional external editors that are available. And we can configure these to our needs as well. For example, if I wanted to configure Analog Effects Pro 2, I could select that. And now here we can see the application that's being used, and we can see the file settings. And here I've got this one set to use a file format of TIFF with Profoto and 16 bits per component. Now it's interesting to note that if I leave Analog Effects Pro 2 set here in this dialog box and click on OK, when I go back to the photo menu and choose Edit In, we'll see that Analog Effects Pro is now my secondary editor accessible with Control-Alt-E or Command-Option-E. So in this way, we can set any one of the additional editors in our long list to be the secondary editor accessible with a keyboard shortcut of Control-Alt-E. Let's go back to the Preferences menu, and we'll take a look at some of the other options that are available here. I really like using Nix Silver Effects Pro 2 to create black and white images. However, when I click on this preset, I can see that while it has a file format of TIFF, it's by default set to a color space of sRGB, and I prefer Profoto here. So I can make this change. Now when I make the change, notice that this dropdown indicates that this preset has been edited. Now if I want to make sure that this change is permanent, I can simply click this dropdown once again and here at the bottom, I can either save the current settings as a new preset, or I can simply update the preset, Silver Effects Pro 2, and that's what I want to do. So I'll click on this, and now this becomes my permanent setting. I can use the same process to choose any additional file editor that I want, and then save it as a new preset. Simply by clicking Choose here, browsing through the file system to find the editor of my choice, and then configuring it appropriately and saving it as a new preset. Now I like Silver Effects Pro 2, it's one of my most used presets, so I'm going to leave that configured as my secondary editor. I'll click on OK, and once again under the photo menu, if we choose Edit In, we can see Silver Effects Pro is now available with Control Alt E. Now, I still have all the rest of my editors available from the menu, but Silver Effects Pro, being one of my most used, is now available with the keyboard shortcut. So here I can choose this file, 
and I can simply press Control Alt E. And I have the option to go ahead and edit this photo within Silver Effects Pro 2. I'll go ahead and click Edit, and Silver Effects Pro 2 opens up. I'll go ahead and just use this default preset and click on Save. And this will take us back to Lightroom where a new file is now created. This is a TIFF, which is the way that I configured Silver Effects Pro 2, and my original file is still here and still intact. That's how you set up additional external editors in Lightroom, and you can configure as many as you like. Most of the popular Lightroom plugins will automatically install themselves, but remember that you can add in any additional program that you want. And remember that you have the ability to set up any one of those editors as your secondary editor available with the keyboard shortcut. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Lightroom, Photoshop, and photography tips, tricks, and other information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.